Now, electricity. You know, you switch your light on and the light comes on, doesn't it? It's amazing what happens with electricity. Uh, but it wasn't like that when it was first discovered back in the 1700s by Benjamin Franklin. And, and that technology these days that was just in its infancy then is such a massive part of everyday life, isn't it? Charging up your phone, watching the telly, using your hairdryer, although I don't use it very often. Uh, more than ever, though, there is a big push now for more electric vehicles. So you'll know that one of the big sellers last year when it comes to cars was electric vehicles. Uh, sales rose, to, I think it was something like 25% in a year. So huge number of electric cars now on the roads. But it's not just cars that can help save the environment. No, there's something else as well, but sounds much more difficult to achieve. And the University of Nottingham has taken another step forward in helping towards this. BBC Radio Nottingham's Laurie Deitch went to find out more. We're in the lab now looking at a small aeroplane which is designed for racing. It's a uh, single seat light aircraft in a racing class that's designed to put about five to ten aeroplanes in the air at one time. In the Aerospace Technology Centre at the University of Nottingham, some pretty groundbreaking work is taking place here to develop the world's first electric race aeroplane. And research fellow Richard Glassick is explaining all about it. There is no electric racing category running at the moment uh, for aeroplanes which people fly. There is some electric racing in model aeroplanes, but this will be the, the first um, large category of uh, piloted aeroplane that we know of. They're currently in the design process, which is where they'll decide what size battery to put in and where the motors should go. The technology developed right here in Nottingham to make this electric plane will have a huge impact in the electric aviation industry. But don't get too excited yet. You won't be going on your next holiday in an electric plane anytime soon. The larger the aeroplane at the moment, the heavier the aeroplane, the more difficult it is going to be to uh, make the propulsion system electric. Lots of the other subsystems in the aeroplane are becoming more electric, but the propulsion system obviously needs a lot of energy. And so for larger aeroplanes, longer range flying, typical airliners, we just don't have the battery storage technology or the electrical energy storage technology to be able to provide those long ranges. But it is developing. Part of what enabled them to take on this massive project was that the Uni of Nottingham already has a successful electric motorcycle programme, so the model from the bike will be transferred into the design process for the plane. Hi, I'm Louis. I'm the technical manager on the electric superbike project and I'm working with Richard on the electric aircraft project. The one in the bike is slightly different to the one in the plane because essentially the way it works out, it's better for us to use different motors in different places. One of the ones that is less suited to the bike, more suited to the aeroplane, is what we're going to use in the aeroplane, which is this one we've got here. It's about 20 kilos and it's got about 250 horsepower, which is, compares pretty well to the petrol engines, but the uh, only problem with it is you've got to haul around a whole load of batteries. Batteries to me is uh, just those little ones that go in your light. <laughs> oh, well, we're not far off. I mean, this is what an individual battery looks like. We've just got about 700 of them in the bike. And the plane, the plane will have about 500 of them in. Just what they look like. Next of all, mobile phone sized. Pouches. Oh, and they're just loads of them? Yeah, just about 700 of them all stuck together. If you look under here, that's just those cells there poked through. Oh. Tiles burn over, and you just bolt a bus bar on. Off we go. And we've got some electronics that measures the voltage and the temperature of the things while they're in the bike. And if we go racing. Whoa, they make it sound so easy, don't they? Amazing, the kind of things that goes on at the University of Nottingham. You don't always know what they're working on. Good to lift the lid on that. BBC Radio Nottingham, good morning.